Hatred Farmer welcomes you to the ocean of practical knowledge about small animal practice. That is Hatred's YouTube channel. Dr. Chandrasekhar Sir is a renowned clinician having a clinical experience of more than 20 years in small animal practice. He has pursued a postgraduate degree and a doctorate in veterinary clinical medicine. Currently serving as a professor in the Department of Veterinary Clinical Medicine at MVC Chennai, he specializes in veterinary medical oncology and small animal internal medicine. Hatfield family extends a heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Chandrasekhar sir for sharing insightful content with our fellow veterinarians. Thank you sir. Okay, uh, dear participant, uh, you know, um, today topic which I am going to discuss you about the cardio pulmonary resuscitation in dogs and cats. I would like to thank Hathrad Parma for providing this opportunity and uh, we would like to provide update information uh, on uh, uh, CPR uh, usage in uh, dog and cat. So, the first uh, important thing which I would like to uh, insist is in case of cardiopulmonary arrest, arrest there will be a lack of, lack of effective respiration and circulation preceding death so it's our uh, you know duty to uh avoid the hypoxic condition so the animal also develop hypovolemia and hypoglycemia hypo or hyperthermia and sometime uh, drug or anesthetic over uh, action also can uh, go into cpr thromboembolism you will get the cardiopulmonary arrest tamponade accumulation of fluid around the pericardium it develop a cardiopulmonary arrest Tension pneumothorax also can cause uh, cardiopulmonary arrest. Then trauma of the head, it can end up with cardiopulmonary arrest. These are all the various uh, physiological factors wherein the, the animal uh, develop uh, cardiopulmonary arrest. So normally what we do now in case of animal affected with uh, cardiopulmonary arrest, uh, the clinical sign is very important. So they have a, you can see, uh, they have a pelar mucous membrane and there will be increased respiration rate, there will be increased heart rate, changes in the temperature and then uh, changes in the pulse quality. You can also see the pulse quality in the femoral artery and you can also change the heart rate by changes in the auscultation. There are occasions you will have a tachycardia, there are occasions you will have a bradycardia. So, as soon as the animal, uh, you know, showing sign of cardiopulmonary arrest, and you need to give a priority to attend these cases on time. The most important the clinical sign, most of the animal uh, with the multi organ involvement, they have become unconscious, they are unresponsive, lack of chest wall movement, and then uh, when you auscultate, you will hear no heart sounds. The animal may, may be having fixed or dilated people. ECG, you will have a ventricular fibrillation. And you will also get ESC stone, pulseless electrical activity, and then pulseless ventricular patch cardiac. These are all the, some of the important clinical signs you observe in the case of uh, cardiopulmonary arrest. So another important uh, observation. Uh, when you connect the patient with the ECG, you will have a ventricular fibrillation images on the ECG paper like this. In case of A system, you will not see any uh, you know, elevation or uh, uh, depression of the PQRST complex. You can see the flat uh, you know, uh, line on the ECG screen. In case of Pulseless electrical tachycardia, you can see the, you know, the pattern, which is like a B, multiple B on the EC system. Pulseless electrical activity, you can see the, you know, uh, QRST complex, Q 
you are not able to see the p wave on the is there all some of the abnormal arrhythmias abnormal uh, ecg pattern you can see uh, on the ecg strips ventricular fibrillations you can see the wave like pattern yes is told you love the straight line ventricular tachycardia v shaped pattern multiple v shaped pattern pulseless electrical activity so you, know, you can see the qrs t complex not able to see the p wave on the ecg strip then basic life support what are the parameters you have to consider you need to uh, think about uh, airway you have to assess they call it as a breathing you need to correct they call it as b then circulation that is the third point that is uh, that is the primary important uh, parameter in case of animal affected with the cardiopulmonary arrest airway what you are going to do we need to correct the airways uh, you know by uh, uh, providing uh, or placing the endotracheal tube into the trachea and uh, first of all you need to check whether the airway is there or airway is closed or any obstruction in the airway that you have to check once you identify the airway then we have to assess the breathing then finally you need to address the circulation so everything has to be done in a minute you cannot take longer time so the yearly uh, procedure of airway breathing circulation you will have better recovery the animal can be uh, bring back to normal patients another important thing which i would like to insist is uh, no putting an et tube putting an et tube it's a team work trained team should be available and uh, so what are the observation they need to do no someone has to hold the scruff of the neck of the animal and uh, someone has to you know put the uh, muzzle on the upper jaw and lower jaw and one person should you know depress the tongue not by touching the trachea so depression of the cardiac part of the tongue you need to do it if you have a lignocaine spray little amount of lignocaine spray you can spray it that will desensitize the cardiac part of the oral cavity then you can see the epiglottis opening if there is any obstructions like mucus secretions or foreign body uh, or any tumor mass or any too much of secretion that has to be removed so that animal can breathe better so airway you need to keep it clear there is not be any uh, hindrance in the passage so how they do uh, airway you know uh, keeping it uh, correct pathway the most important step is the endotracheal tube intubations and before inserting the endotracheal intubations you need to keep the endotracheal tube uh, what do you say you know uh, sterile and then there is a inflation cup on the tip that you need to check maybe gentle pressure on the after inflation no the endotracheal tube inflation cup is in the front of the endotracheal tube just gently press if it is too much uh, inflation of the air it will be tight the tight uh, inflation cup it will damage the tracheal mucosa so what you need to do is you can inflate and thereby you know it should be sharp it should not be too much tense that you have to check just by gentle pressure you can feel by gentle pressure you can feel that uh, uh, you know Uh, smoothness another important thing you know which i would like to stress you is um uh, applying a lignocaine jelly or lignocaine spray on the et tubes if you apply that you no know, when you introduce the et tube to an animal they won't pay feel pain so that is an another important uh, observations and the laryngoscope it must have a light source and uh, the three, three people uh, you know we need to do this one person should hold the upper jaw and lower jaw by holding the animal 
another person say, you know with the laryngoscope you just compress it the same person you can introduce the endotracheal tube and if you want to administer the oxygen to et tube you can connect the oxygen resource containing uh, you know there are say, separate uh, various machines that are available oxygen concentrator or if you want to connect mechanical ventilators you can connect with the patient thereby if you are giving oxygen uh, concentrate people many people they would have used for corona problems they use uh, oxygen via face mask in that they'll get the 40% saturation level when you do the similar method the dog also will get the 40% saturation level with the help of face mask but when you do a endotracheal tube via administration of oxygen via mechanical ventilation they'll get the 100% the oxygen level these are all the you no know, advantages of uh keeping the airway patent by placing the endotracheal tube and by connecting with the good resource of oxygen like you know you can connect them with the mechanical ventilator or any other oxygen cylinder source also but it should come with the humidifier and then you can administer the oxygen but mechanical ventilation to 100% oxygen oxygen saturations so this is the way you know it will help when you give an oxygen uh, it will go to the various parts of the body and uh, you know the animal uh, regain the consciousness once you give the oxygen then breathing is another important uh, step so uh, the animal has to breathe and the breathing you have to assist animal which are unconscious you need to assist there are two three technique they follow one of the technique you know if the animal which are you know imagine like a gradient and all uh, you can do a two hand technique by keeping your hand on the heart region you just compress it but the compression there are a lot of videos i have that i'll play and now i will just uh, you know i'll keep my uh, hand straight i folded my hand and you can see my elbow is straight so we need to what you are you need to just give the pressure like this you can see my body movement and my elbows are on fixed so you need to keep uh, giving uh, compression so you need to give a 15 compression then one breath 15 compression one breath so like that you know you need to do the uh, cpr there are method you can also initiate uh, breathing by ampu pack ampu pack is like a conical flask like structure through that uh, oxygen resource we connect and then you know we compress the ampu pack so thereby animal get the sufficient quantity of uh, oxygen through ampu pack method another method you know uh, this, this, this all these tip, tips airway breathing circulation has to be done uh, immediately uh all oh, everything has to be done within a fraction of second and minute so this, this is about the breathing and uh, there are dog like uh, your um, you know bull mastiff and those uh, dog you need to compress on the sternal region keep the animal on the ventral view compress on the sternal regions breed like great dames you need to have the compression on the no heart regions breed like labrador you need to compress on the chest regions it will also tell you the pros and cons and what are the uh, advantages of doing the particular site we will explain to you subsequently so the, the third point is the circulations circulation how do you do you just save the fur locate the blood vessels and you use Uh, you know when from different size of infant that are available for pediatric use middle age dog and adult dog save the area locate the vein and then uh, fix it so all the catheters are over the needle catheter above the needle there is a catheter that are available you have to use a needle for penetrations once you enter into the blood vessel once you poke the blood vessels by using the needle just uh, prick it you will see some amount of blood uh, coming in the another end then you have to withdraw the needle for example uh, imagine there's a pen here and you know um, uh, 
uh, i want to connect it uh, imagine uh, my mobile phone is the blood vessels and uh, you know the, this needle over the, the, the my pen is like a catheter just introduce into the blood vessel once you enter into the blood vessel you have to withdraw the needle needle alone you have to withdraw catheter you have to push it back and uh, for example you know here i uh, what i do uh, the uh, catheter i will uh, take it back no needle i take it back catheter i will push forward so if this can be positioned properly the message is the needle you have to use only for penetration once you enter the blood vessel you will see some amount of blood on other side and after that you know you have to withdraw the needle push only the catheters once you push the catheters you position it and then uh, administer the drug whatever you want suppose you want to administer adrenaline you administer adrenaline and suppose the patient is hypoglycemic you want to administer glucose you can administer glucose suppose the patient is uh, hypocalcemic you want to administer calcium you can administer calcium animal is hypotensive due to anemia you want to administer blood you can administer blood hypotensia or tension due to fluid loss you want to administer you can administer just like so vascular access simple step step but that is an important step so suppose you are raising the blood vessels if you are not able to raise the blood vessel it is collapsing collapsing means in those cases you can go for cut down technique make a you know a longitudinal incision then uh, remove all the fascia with the blood vessels then fix the catheters once you fix the catheters uh, you know the, the whatever the drug you want to administer it can go very easily and then uh, you can save the life of the animals Hardwell Pharma presents Hardcore DS Prednisolone Sodium Oral Solution The ultimate power of steroid with double strength Hardcore DS is available as Prednisolone Sodium Phosphate Oral Solution Hardcore DS Syrup For placing order contact our sales team or WhatsApp 98372 53817 or visit www.hatwit.com thank you so cut down technique you can do in saphenous area you can do it in jugular vein you can also do it in femoral vein so the important message of this uh, technique uh, about the peripheral blood vessel uh, access sometimes if you are not able to access the peripheral blood vessel you have to go for central line access central line access already we have given elaborate information in my uh, other presentations even then uh, you know here i will repeat because central line access is very very important in a critical patient what we do know we have a single line uh, central line we have a double lumen catheters we have a triple lumen catheters depends upon your need uh, catheter that are available in the market what you have to do it here is and uh, there again there is a scientist name called seldinger in the year 1968 he invented this uh, technique before that you know to any part of the body suppose the individual having aortic stenosis they cut open the thoracic cavity they do thoracotomy then they go lift the heart and then they go to aorta the stenosed area surgically uh, you know they make a incision on the heart they surgically correct after the invention of the seldinger seldinger technique Ah, the, 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 because the technique devised by the Schellinger, so they given the name called Schellinger technique. In that, what the what uh, he has done, no, he has uh, he, has, he developed a device wherein you know it won't hurt the blood vessel, but it will go to the target organ. So they have a set of instrument. They have a sixteen gauge needle, and they have a um, guide wire, and they have a thin dilator. There is a thick dilator. then there is a uh, catheters it is available set up instrument that are available they also provide the uh, 16 gauge needle or the size of the needle whatever you want you can get it and then use it so how i told you, you know how the vascular access being done in a cephalic vein similarly you can do it in the central line so jugular vein in animal is superficial what you have to do is you have to save the area and raise the jugular vein and then uh, first you have to what you have to do is you just introduce the needle once you introduce the needle you can see the flow of blood 
and with the availability of through the same uh, opening you have to introduce the guide wire once you introduce the guide wire the remove the needle place the guide wire in position then after that you use a thin dilator and the dilator should go in a rotatory mesh rotatory way the another uh, after removing a thin dilator you can introduce the thick dilator you can uh, make a bigger uh, way by uh, rotatory movement into the jugular side so after uh, removing the thicker dilator then finally you fix the double lumen catheter or single lumen catheter or uh, tetra lumen catheters you can uh, thread on the guide wire then slowly you take it then fix it in the uh, neck region the catheter can go up to the right atrium of the heart uh, that particular animal so once it is in the right atrium of the heart you can have a better flow of uh, blood in the catheters then remove the guide wire and that particular area one important problem what normally we face no? the catheter side immediately getting occluded with the blood to avoid the blood normally what we do we, uh, we uh, use epiranide saline in the needle in the dilator on the guide wire and also in the catheters so that it won't clot because you know when uh, blood is touches the parin protein it immediately uh, clotted because there are a lot of clotting factors that are available in the blood like platelet all clotting factors start with one two seven nine four six seven eight nine like that those things are uh, you know uh, getting clotted uh, helpful in clotting then uh, the uh, fibrinogen converted into fibrin that will also important for clotting so to avoid once the clotting develops you know, the entire process or you want to administer the oral when you want to administer the blood or when you want to administer the dextrose or when you want to administer the calcium or when you want to administer the antidote or when you want to administer the adrenaline it becomes challenging so to avoid the catheter getting occluded before fitting the catheter into the jugular site we have to prime them with the epiranide saline so you take uh, maybe 500 units of heparin in a, a 20 ml syringe you take enough quantity of saline and then uh, to mix it then you you know uh, apply on the on the all the devices like you know first needle then you can apply uh, it on the j wire you can apply it on the thin dilator you can apply it in the thick dilator finally you will have to infuse into the catheter there are arterial line and venous line and both there you have to uh, infuse the epiranide saline so that you will not have any problem of uh, fixing the jugular catheter with the jugular some of the problem what we face when you fix the jugular catheter there will be a kinking of the catheters. Imagine this is the jugular catheter. We are fixing it here. With the tip getting, uh, you know, bent. Sometimes the, the tip also go, it will go subcutaneous. So in those occasions, you will not be able to get the proper flow of blood. So you need to have a trained team to fix this small procedure. Once you fix it, you know, you will not have any problem. You can leave this catheter with the patient for part five days. There won't be any problem. And every day, you know, removal, removing the bandaged site, uh, st keep it uh, sterility on the catheter site is very important. Another important thing is while, uh, while fixing the catheter into the jugular vein, you need to keep it, uh, the, perform the procedure in a sterile manner. And if you don't perform the procedure in a sterile manner, the every possibility is the animal can get into the sepsis. And you know, uh, after the performance with the sterile conditions, you need to apply some chlorhexidine solution on the catheter and also on the lid, so that uh, infection spreading via the catheter can be prevented. Animal will be comfortable. These are all the some of the procedures normally we use. Sometimes, uh, if you accidentally select the wrong needle when you uh, you know uh, thread the guide wire, 
the guide wire it will not go into the needle that's also another problem we face and uh, animal which are hypotensive you will not be able to perform this procedure whatever i told about the jugular catheterization this technique was performed by the scientist named called seldinger so they named his name called the seldinger technique and once uh, the standardization of this procedure many interventional procedures many advancement encountered in uh, human medicines for example i told you know there is aortic stenosis instead of cutting open the thoracic cavity reaching the cutting the heart and going to the aorta through femoral artery the catheter they'll take the going to the stenosed area and then they dilate the stenosed area with uh, this type of uh, catheter technique so this procedure it played a major role and it saved many uh, people suffering it saved many animals suffering it saved many critically ill patient human side it saved many critically ill patient animal side so he is the only scientist who worked for uh, both uh, human and also for animals so some uh, problem which you encountered suppose the dog bigger size if you fix the lesser uh, gauze or lesser size catheter you will not be able to you know get uh, enough quantity of blood or uh, you will not be able to perform similarly bigger bore catheter using it for smaller patient patient which are aging 3 kilos and all if you use a bigger bore catheter and uh, there is a possibility you know you may damage the catheter site that's also very important some precautionary method you need to follow while doing the jugular catheter one of the precautionary method normally what you have to follow you know uh, there are occasion you need to avoid the jugular catheter catheterization like animal which are having bleeding disorder animal which are having a coagulation defect animal which are having less amount of platelet animal which are having a, you know any surgery on the neck region you need to avoid animal which are having any sepsis on the neck region you need to avoid putting the catheter and uh, some complications if you uh, you know all these indications if you can if you go perform the procedure then it become a problem to the patients and uh, sometime you know uh, if there is uh, if the catheter not into the jugular uh, vein properly and if you fix only uh, the small portion of the catheter fix in the jugular vein you will not get the proper flow of blood there will be a hypotension will be there and some cases animal which are suffering with the coagulation defect or bleeding disorders if you perform this catheterization there will be a erythema on the catheter site so clotting factor profile check the pt aptt values fibrinogen values platelet count then all those things should be normal level if these things are not normal there very possibility you know uh, you will have a problem of uh, uh, bleeding uh, you will have a problem of uh, you know uh, clot formation inside the aorta and uh, there will be a, there are occasion you develop the trombus formations in that get it will become a life threatening problems so these parameters these guidelines you must have in your mind while doing the uh circulations even similarly cut down technique when you are, i told you when you are not able to access the peripheral blood vessel you can go for uh central line access sometimes central line access also become challenging means what you can do is you can uh, go for cut down technique cut down technique already i told you so make a small incision on the particular neck region first inside the skin then inside the fascia you can see the flow of blood because jugular vein is superficial then you can raise the blood vessel as i told you know the beginning of my presentation how they do the sealing and taking they use needle then they use the guide wire then use thin dilator then thick dilator finally they fix the double lumen catheter and before that they prime with the uh, apronized saline of all this uh, accessory to avoid the clot that's very important the another important observations which i would like to tell you is 
cut down technique also similar technique but you know uh, rarely being performed in veterinary practice but my opinion is, you know just to make incision you can raise the jugular vein similar manner which i told you know how this technique is being followed just uh, follow the steps you can fix it position it so you can put a stay switches on both the sides and then uh, you take some pyridinedin gauze or the chlorhexidine containing solution with the gauze cover the arterial line venous line or catheter site then finally cover with the bandage then finally put a dynaplast so so far we have done the 50 to 60 cases when we use a dynaplast we didn't uh, face any problems uh, while you uh, while using the dynaplast so cover the area with the dynaplast then uh, bandage it so you will not have any problems and no need to put e collar when you cover with the uh, Uh, catheter with uh, sterile gauze and then bandage and then dynaplast normally it will stick into the positions uh, with this technique i didn't come across any problem with uh, any of the patients and uh, only thing is no uh, uh, final time we uh, use uh, heparin there are arterial and venous line we use heparin into the arterial line maybe 1.4 ml then venous line 1.3 cc of uh, heparin we infuse the using this heparin no to avoid the clotting in the catheters imagine the catheter is inside and finally before wrapping up the two end of the double open catheters there is a space dead space available if this dead space filled with the blood immediately it will clot next time you know when you want to administer fluid the next day it will become clot you cannot use it you have to take it out and then uh, you have to go for new site animal with the sepsis animal with the multi organ failure raising the jugular vein also become challenging so it is a simple technique but it's an important technique we need to uh, do it a uh, couple of cases then your the hand will be trained you can uh, you know the technique of uh, performing the procedure on time and you can save uh, many critically ill animals then it will become easy for you initially a couple of cases begin beginner veterinarian they will face some problem after some time there won't be any problem they can perform the procedure very easily this all about the uh, jugular preservation and cut down technique and then um, the next day when i want to perform the when i want to administer some amount of fluid or some bandaging technique i want to do i want to take the animal with the renal failure i want to sip the blood from the patient to the machine so i need to <coughs> remove the if infused heparin from the catheter both the arterial venous line then i'll check the flow of blood imagine the uh, the arterial venous line will be like this from the jugular from the right atrium of the heart the blood will be coming so i'll check the flow of blood from arterial line and venous line the flow is good i immediately connect to the patients to the machine so uremic blood getting purified with the artificial kidney then artificial kidney once it purified purified blood sent back to the patients so that is possible when you have the good flow of blood good fixing of the catheter and the animal consumed the poisoning so the poisoning can be uh, you know removed by the artificial kidney uh, dialysis technique there are specialized filter that are available coated with the activated charcoal so all the poisoning combined with the activated charcoal in the artificial kidney purified blood sent back to the patient this is one of the breakthrough technique they normally they follow in human medicine another thing animal which is sepsis for example most of our pyometra patient they will be in a septic condition lot of inflammatory mediator like interleukins prostaglandin thromboxin a2 all these inflammatory other some key numbers available in the blood the double wbc count also very high all these inflammatory you want to filter there is no drug available to filter the all these inflammatory mediator but there is a kit that are available in uh, human medicine called oxyuris kit so what it does the blood goes into the oxyuris kit there are several thousand fibers in the artificial kidney imagine this is the artificial kidney is having lot of fiber inside so the blood is supplied to the artificial kidney fibers and there are several thousand fibers and inside the fiber alone the blood goes and then all the inflammatory media that are present in the blood get absorbed by the artificial kidney so purified blood sent back to the patient 
So animal consumed by any, you can do a gastric lavage and remove the feed. Gastric lavage, how you will remove? So accidentally animal consumed any poison. Uh, no, what uh, one of the technique you can do, you know, you can do a gastric lavage. You can uh, open the mouth, fix the endotracheal tube, then fix the stomach tube from the oral cavity up to the stomach. Infuse your saline, then you suck it out or take it out. Or you can also uh, mix the anti-activated charcoal, infuse through the stomach tube, leave it in the stomach. So the poisoning absorption by the stomach getting prevented. This is one of the technique, gastric lava. Suppose <coughs> this has to be done immediately. Suppose if it takes longer time, so but the patient consumed uh, two, three hours before, they brought it very late. So imagine the poison that they enter into the blood, you cannot remove with your drug. So what uh, are any other method of treatment? So one of the method is available now, the blood can be exposed to the activated charcoal containing cartridges. So the, all the poison getting absorbed by the activated charcoal water cartridges, then purified blood sent back to the patients. This is all about the, uh, you know, the cartridges use. And then uh, the importance of jugular catheters, how that will help in purifying the blood. Purification technique, this will play in. Similarly, the sepsis cases, all the inflammatory media does, None of the drug can, can overcome, you know, all the inflammatory media does. With this oxyuris kit, all the inflammatory media is getting um, filtered, then purified blood sent back to the patient. This is possible only uh, this type of uh, methods. Uh, for that, your hand should be trained in putting the jugular vein. And, uh, you know, uh, if you can observe a couple of cases, you will be in a position to do it. So, so airway, uh, sometimes you try the center line, you tried peripheral line, you tried cut down. In spite of that, you are not able to raise the vein. The other method, uh, what is available right now, you can go for intraosseous route. Intraosseous route, there are three sites normally we will follow. We follow wing of the ileum, then uh, trochanteric fossa of the femur, then lateral count of the humerus. There are several sites given, but these three sites I am comfortable. I am most important comfortable site. You no, know, I will select the femur head there. Wherein we look at the prochondric fossa of the femur. Imagine this is my femur head. Prochondric fossa of the femur, you know, the depression will be like this. This particular area I will palpate and locate. Then this particular area, in will save the area, apply some antiseptic, infiltrate lignogen. The infiltrate lignogen also, it has to go into the periosteum of the bone, desensitize the area. Then uh, we will infuse whatever the drug it wants, you know, we can infuse. Suppose the needle is going uh, posteriorly by palpation I can uh, observe or if I infuse the saline no, or the blood or the any drug, it will come subcutaneous. Suppose when, when it is uh, too much posteriorly damage the sciatic nerve, suppose if it is going laterally, you know, with the palpation I can make out, if the needle is inside the medullary cavity of the femur bone, you want to verify, you just move the bone, uh, when you move the bone, Move, uh, parallel to the movement of the bone, the needle also will go. That means the needle inside the medullary cavity of the femur bone. So this is the one way to confirm. The 100% confirmation, take an x-ray and the position of the needle can be confirmed. So all drug, adrenaline you can give, calcium you can give, dextrose you can give, uh, ringus lactate you can give, whatever the drug you want, all the drug can be given, except the higher molecular weight substances like, you know, etosarch, and other drugs, you know, you need to be uh, uh, administered very slowly because uh, the bony cells, you know, uh, when you give too much of molecular weight substances, the adjacent nerves and all devices pain, uh, you know, uh, the animal will be in a lot of discomfort. So that's the way you are to do an uh, intraosseous technique. And uh, the message to the practitioners, academicians, uh, all the procedures, interventional procedures, animal can tolerate. But any intervention procedure in the bone, it will cause us a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort to the animal. Always see that the animal should not have any pain. That is the message which I want to tell you uh, in this uh, scientific webinar. So, airway I told you. Then the airway also eat it to... Uh... Hardwit Pharma presents Clindahat, Clindamycin syrup and tablets. A weapon to fight deadly infections with care.
Clinda Heart is available in the following formats. Clindamycin 250mg tablets, Clinda Heart 250 tablets, Clindamycin 600mg tablets, Clinda Heart 600 tablets, Clindamycin oral suspension, Clinda Heart syrup. For placing order, you can contact our sales team or WhatsApp 98372 53817 or visit www.hardware.com. Thank you. Positioning is one method. Another method, no, you can also create a tracheostomy tube. You can fix the tracheostomy tube on the trachea. If you feel that the caudal part of the abdomen is obstructed, you need to create the airway. You need to do a tracheostomy tube, fix the tracheostomy tube. And there, there are occasions, you know, um, um, uh, the, the example is the, the case of brachiocephalic breathing. We have a separate session also. Brachiocephalic breathing, they have a short nose. And in that nose, they are not able to inhale like a long nose breathe. And those cases, uh, when they are having a breathing distress, uh, you know, uh, you need to open the mouth and then uh, fix the ET tube into the trachea, the animal will be comfortable. Another important thing is, no, you need to cool that area, uh, especially uh, breeds like pug. You need to cool that area. Then, uh, the uh, too much handling if you can avoid. And those cases with the uh, flow by oxygen or by administration via endotracheal tube or administration via tracheostomy tube, they recover very well. Even collection of the blood itself, you have to avoid the uh, animal with the breakers of like the uh, short nose conditions. They have a breathing distress. The very common in case of uh, summer time but uh, once you uh, see the case no immediately bring them uh, keep them in the air conditioning room uh, avoid the too much movement uh, of the animal and uh, give them butrophenol 5.2 mg per kg body weight and give the flow by oxygen this itself majority of them will become all right but here again you have to check whether the animal is having stenatic nerve narrow nostril whether it's having a vector laryngeal cyclone uh, that is we have to open the mouth and see whether it's having a elongated soft pellet so all those things we need to check and uh, if you correct the primary problem then only you make them all right but animal with the uh, breathing distress but this is the methodology uh, you know uh, you you have to immobilize the animal by giving a uh, short injection of a butyrophenol 0.2 mg that's what i manage a precursor of and i'll keep with them the air conditioning i'll uh, advise the owner and my internee to avoid too much handling even the blood collection we will do later on and then uh, in that position itself we give a flow by oxygen and that itself we found a lot of success rate. This is the most important thing, uh, you know, animal with the uh, heart nose, these are all the criteria and uh, my opinions, you know, the uh, uh, pet practitioners, you must have uh, your own guidelines or you, have, you must have a pamphlet, you will have to give it to the pet parents. So that they will understand the importance of the breakers of breed and their problems. If they are not understanding, so many animals they are dying uh, when they are bringing for investigation itself. And you know, the summer time they have a lot of uh, breathing distress uh, because less available oxygen around the nose. And then in those cases, if they are uh, putting the collar on the neck and then uh, with the choke chain when they are uh, pulling, you know, immediately the animal collapses. Then it will become a life-threatening conditions. So, if you can advise the owner, uh, those who are having a short nose breed, you tell them these breed prone to develop uh, uh, breathing distress. These breed uh, prone to develop multi organ failure, gastrointestinal disturbances. So, you see that the animal should not be stressed. And uh, summer time, avoid the animal to take uh, outside too much. And then, air positions, it should not be uh, exhausted too much, it should not be tensed. Why the animal, you know, uh, with the, uh, you know, with the, uh, with the freedom. Uh, so the animal should be with a lot of freedom, and uh, avoid putting the choke chain. Another important thing is, you no, know, avoid taking them in the summer. These are all the some of the parameter you have to follow when you are having a brachiocephalic breed. And uh, these are all the important points. And then in my opinion, you try to uh, the message with this slide. You try to improve your skill in the interosseous technique. Try to improve your skill in vascular access. Try to improve your skill in the, the central line. Center, try to improve your little cut down technique in the cephalic vein, cut down technique in the cooler vein, so that lie, uh, so that you can save a critical ill animal. Many times I could see youngsters, even the seniors, they never do a cut down technique. 
So don't afraid. This only has to be surgeon has to do. It's not like that. Emergency time. You are trained team in the critical care unit. All they should know all these small small procedure. All these small procedure is a life saving procedure in case of small animals. So my uh, suggestion, you know, all the working personnel in the emergency critical care unit should be trained because many times the workforce will not be able to mobilize. So if you have a trained team in the hospital. Uh, in a routine basis, they will take care of it. All to be trained, uh, you know. Then only you can do a meaningful job in a critically uh, uh, job, critically ill animal recovery. You can do a meaningful job. Next slide. Uh, this is the uh, airway assessment, uh, and uh, this I told you, you know the uh, brachiocephalic breed. They have a short nose, and there are occasions they have a stenotic nerve. That means narrow nerves. What they do, certain no, the neuro nerves no, they cut this side, and sometimes they make a VP, V shape incision on the uh, medial aspect, and major time that they do with the lateral aspect. The message to the veterinarian: the animal should have a bigger, uh, you know, should have a good passage for breathing. And sometimes you uh, beginner or the practitioner, those who are having a lot of cases, you need to examine the nostril properly for these breeds. If it is having the sufficient space for breathing, you need not have to interfere. If they are, <coughs> if they are having low, uh, narrow nostril, it is your duty to interfere and make the connection bigger, make the opening bigger so that it can breathe better. That is the message. And then if they are having elongated sample, you have to sedate and open the mouth and check whether it is having elongated sample, you have to check it. Similarly, animal with having everter laryngeal saccule. It will be in the inside the caudal part of the oral cavity, in the small, uh, you know, one to two centimeter length uh, enlarged structure uh, you can see. And then if you see that, that has to be corrected surgically. So, surgical correction of narrow, uh, surgical correction of narrow nerves, surgical correction of elongated soft palate. Elongated soft palate, no, there are uh, diatomy that are available. In that, cutting and the clotting uh, device is available. And they, sometimes they also use a carbon dioxide laser. With the carbon dioxide laser, no, if it is the animal is having an elongated soft blood, the elongated soft blood, they cut it and immediately it will also clot if you heal, the animal can breathe better. It's a small technique, but it's important. Similarly, the narrow nerves, they make it bigger and the ever laryngeal cycle surgically they remove. So that's what. So the airway assessment, you know, you need to put this uh, tape or the muzzle below the, uh, you know, uh, inside sir, you need to uh, put it and then similarly lower jaw you have to put it just open it you can check whether it's having elongated soft pedal. the everton laryngeal sac will be here and then uh, sometimes bigger tongue also interfere with the respirations all those things you can check it the elongated sapulet i told you, you know it's a, it's a, here is a opening is there when there is elongated sapulet the entire area covered so the entire over long, over uh, lengthy hot pellet, you can uh, remove by carbon dioxide laser, and uh, you know immediately it will seal also, and the animal feel uh, better, animal can breathe better. Similarly, every laryngeal cycle, this elongated cycle, unless you open the mouth, you cannot see, and then uh, every laryngeal cycle, it will be here, and then uh, the small section when this enlarge, you know, it will interfere with the breathing. That also should be removed, you know, surgically. So, uh, stenotic nerve already I told you. This is the some of the problems you need to bear in mind. Right? Always check it. Check it is safe for you and others. Human takes a human safety takes a priority. Yes, many times I, I I could see some of my students also when the animal is in a critical state, they will be tense. When they are tense, no, they immediately move this and that way, so the animals in the critical stage bleeding and uh, fang fracture, pneumothorax, and having floral efficiency. We have to do like that. If they are going this way and that way, no, it will become big problems. First of all, the intensive care specialist should not be tensed. When they get the case, you need to quickly assess, inform to the owner, the animal is critical, we want to do the best, get the consent from them, then carry on the procedure. Instead of that, if you are tense, if you are moving here and there, then it will become problems. That's all about the, uh, the physician's uh, health aspect. Then, first you have to check the mouth. Then, repositioning them may help to clear the obstruction. 
Reposing means suppose that there is a foreign body in the oral cavity, it will interfere with the breathing. What you have to do is you know, we upside down you hold it, the foreign body present in the oral cavity will come out. They say you hold a small dog upside down, wheelbarrow position for larger dog. Small dog you can hold upside down, the foreign body will come. Bigger dog wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow is the ticket where you can lift the hind leg, follow the animal to walk on the front leg. During the process, the foreign body present in the oral cavity it will come. But if this goes into the use of it, it's very difficult. The foreign body won't come. There are contractile musculature, there are longitudinal musculature. It won't leave the foreign body so easily once it enters the use of it. But it's in the oral cavity, the foreign body come out very easily. Sometimes the examination is very important. Many dogs after eating chicken, you know, the chicken is getting obstructed in the heart palate area. And you know, exactly it will fit in most of the chicken bone. The animal, they will not be in a position to tell, you know, what is there in the one. They salivate and then try to paw their uh, mouth. Many uh, pet parents and the veterinarian, they think that it's a rabies. Once you patiently open the mouth of the patient, you can see the foreign body is stuck into the heart palate or in the, uh, you know, posterior part of the oral cavity. You can remove with the anti The animal will become better and it will not have any problem of salivation or other issues. So we have saved a couple of dogs in the 25 years. Many of which they thought it is a rabies. We sedated after wearing the gloves. We opened the mouth. We, we removed the foreign body chicken pieces. We removed nearly five, six cases. And uh, the dogs, they are fond of food. Even if you keep chicken, no, they try to take away from your hand. Or from the even trained dog, they do like this. So those cases, you know, when they want to uh, eat in a speedy manner, the very possibility the chicken bone getting obstructed with the salt parrot. So those cases by clear by careful examination you can make out this problem very easily. Another thing, you know, hemilich manover, pull up and under a half, hard and fast. So just what you do is you know in the image you can see first portion examining the oral cavity, second portion small dog upside down their body. The bigger dog is doing wheelbarrowing, lifting the back leg and allows the animal to walk on the front leg. So the foreign body present in the oral cavity it can comes out. But another another technique, you know, a heavy leech manoeuvre. But you know, the, you see the examiner keeping the hand, both the hand in behind the uh, 13th rib or keeping the abdominal cavity, and just they are lifting. Once they lift, you no, know, uh, the foreign body present in the oral cavity by applying the pressure in the abdominal region, it comes out very easy. Whatever I told you, you can see in the form of uh, pictures, how they are lifting the back leg upside down and then uh, checking the mouth, the presence of foreign mouth checking. And then, you know, uh, by lifting the abdominal cavity, the pressure applied on the abdominal cavity, some animal carrying the foreign body in the oral cavity comes out. And uh, some animal, you know, if there is a foreign body, it doesn't come, means gentle tapping on the neck regions. The presence of foreign body, it can be lodged very easily. This is the way uh, the you know uh, this uh, manoeuvre over technique they follow in animal model. And then sharp ventrocoronal dots of compression, just cranial to the umbilicus, cranial to the umbilicus, do a five thrust in a quick succession, check for dislodge object and remove it. So five successive movement, you just keep your hand and lift it, lift it five times. And uh, that uh, we have to select uh, cranial to the umbilicus. The examiner should be in the back. And they, they need to do this type of thing. The foreign body present the oral cavity without any surgical intervention, the animal can dislodge it very easily. It's also one of the important uh, procedure. And also the, uh, the emergency critical care specialist or the student or the researcher, they should come with the, uh, that uh, CCU color dress. And uh, you must come with a simple dress. And then, you know, it is easy for you to handle the animal. Not only one animal, you can handle all other animals uh, quickly without any disturbances. If you are wearing a coat, full uh, hand coat and all, difficult. Better wear uh, short form uh, dresses. Uh, there are uh, uh, dress material that are available for surgery unit that can be uh, you must also wear a cap 
you must wear a face mask avoid all the jolts this picture is not uh, you know uh, indicative for the uh, intensive care specialist setup but uh, normally avoid all jolts and uh, your um, fur should be uh, you know covered with your cap wear face mask and you know all the safety uh, shoes uh, you know uh, this type of dress is very very important and this dress you know after you finish the job you leave it in the hospital itself and uh, so that you know uh, any of your family members or the infection from you or from the patient uh, spreading can be controlled this is the way wet and wet student should wear the dress in the hospital and this is the way you know just the lifting how they are doing uh, procedures and here you see and this is the video is not playing probably it will play in your uh, uh, your place and uh, the examiner you know the uh, just uh, animal uh, suspecting is having a foreign body in the oral cavity they gently giving the pressure then finally is holding upside down no? the presence of foreign body you want to discharge it always you know coming under the breathing you need to maintain the positive pressure ventilations by mouth to snout technique they follow in cats and small dog what they know place it over the mouth and nose a medium to large dog place mouth to over nostril 20 breath per minute in case of respiratory arrest 8 to 10 breath per minute in case of cardio pulmonary arrest provide ventilation using endotracheal tube cuff and i told you know the procedure how we have to do the endotracheal tube and it has to be uh, inflated and uh, so that you know it can be positioned and you need to tie it on the back also, so that uh, when the animal uh, you are administering the oxygen through et tube uh, required quantity of oxygen will go into the patient sometimes suppose the et tube uh, endotracheal tube any damage is there instead of going into the trachea the oxygen it may go into the use effect the too much of oxygen leak from the caudal part of the oral cavity from the endotracheal tube the every possibility you know it will cause us uh, you know bloat in animals that issue is bearing in your mind the another important thing is uh, you can keep a 10 breath per minute and then uh, inspiratory time you can keep uh, one second uh, respiratory time you can keep this is the way you know mouth to, to snout but normally you know uh, you can close the mouth of the animal and go very near to the animal just to blow the powerful blow you do it the, the examiner actually is uh, you know biting the animal that has to be avoided come closer then blow very near to the nostril so the animal you know unconscious stage once the oxygen going inside it will become conscious and you know there will be a good amount of uh, uh, circulations all the vital organ getting stimulated and you will have a better and smooth recovery but uh, you know this procedure many of the vet many of the student many of the intensivist they have an assistant in doing and you know but by closing the mouth of the animal and going very near it blowing you know uh, you can perform there won't be any problems then selection of the tube so you need to pre measure the length eh, endotracheal tube from nose uh, nostril uh, you know up to the caudal part of the oral cavity you pre measure the length then size of the tube that is very important and then uh, you uh, keep that uh, endotracheal tube nasal septum size and if it is fit in the nasal septum that is the size of the endotracheal tube for the particular animal you can use sometime you can palpate the trachea laterally and then uh, you know you mean you know the approximate size and then you can fit it and uh, sometime and then uh, suppose the endotracheal whatever you are fitting if it is not uh, if it is inside the tracheal region keep a small amount of uh, cotton piece uh, outside the oral cavity and when there is animal inhale and exhale you can see the movement of the cotton uh, cotton thread that you can check easy and simple test or sometimes the god gauge 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 small piece you keep uh, in front of the et tube you can appreciate when the animal inhale exhale you can see the movement of the 
but that's the way you can check sometimes if it is inside the trachea you can see the foaming of the tracheal tube and the animal exhale no you can see the foaming if it is inside the esophagus when you administer the oxygen immediately you can see the bloating that is one point another point and uh, you know um, uh, even you take the spo2 level and all you will not get the required quantity of uh, saturated oxygen level so these are all the some of the points wherein you can Hardwood Pharma presents Hardcore DS Prednisolin Sodium Oral Solution The ultimate power of steroid with double strength Hardcore DS is available as Prednisolin Sodium Phosphate Oral Solution Hardcore DS Syrup For placing order contact our sales team or WhatsApp 9837253817 or visit www.hardwood.com Thank you perform and then uh, uh, you can do the uh, meaningful job to the critical illness then uh, external some uh, chest compression one is one compression uh, relaxation radio you must follow and then what they are doing it depends on the size of the animal how much is the compression the animal body weight is 30 pound you need to compress uh, 120 times the body weight of the patient 30 to 90 pound you have to compress 80 to 100 times if the body weight of the patient more than 90 pound you need to compress 60 times 60 come these are all the some of the standards which they are standardized with uh, various uh, studies then you can see this uh, animal position then the heart will be uh, position like this so uh, since the bigger dog you can do a uh, double hand technique uh, double hand technique i told you know you keep one hand uh one hand like this above that keep an another hand and then you are elbow should be straightened and keep giving uh, pressure there are several institute cpr technique you know how you need to be master mastered there are several country they are offering the courses also how to do the cpr that you can do or uh, whenever you find time you do perform this technique you your hand to be uh, trained so that uh, when the whenever you get a critically ill animal you can perform the procedure we can revive the animal on time another important thing is no um so i told you round chest dog uh, especially a labrador and all focus compare the widest portion of the chest labrador and all already i told you a labrador you have to uh, compression uh, do it on the widest portion of the chest if it is a gradient and all you have to concentrate on the heart region and if it is a uh, puppy or a kitten or the cat you can do a single hand technique single hand technique you need to you know uh, keep your finger thumb and then index finger like this imagine uh, the the heart uh, you know uh, you know it's, it's like this my mobile phone is hot and then my the right hand is the compression uh, fingers you need to do like this do like this with a single hand technique you can uh, um send the blood to the circulations the animal in a critical condition can be revived example of labrador uh, golden retriever neopet and mastiff graded so how they are performing the chest compressions and then uh, animal with the narrow chested dog focus compression over the heart gray one compression over the heart barrel chest dog focus compression over the chest if it truly wider than deep compression over the sternum is reasonable to attempt so these breed concentrate on the sternal regions where you have to concentrate this part you can you can see a bulldog at the box and see how the examiner keeping his hand and then you know is able to perform the procedures the message is you have to compress on the sternal region that's the this is the message then only you will get a, a good uh, flow of blood uh, to the various blood vessels 
small dog and cats you see the single hand uh, technique you see where they are keeping the thumb and uh, where they are keeping other fingers and the other side you no know, the thumb and finger you need to join like both the area you need to keep your uh, finger you need to uh, meet like this and then keep compressing you see here how they are keeping like that you need to do it. the physical position of the compression the superposed palm locked the elbow see the locked elbow shoulder directly over the compression site see, uh, you can see the there is a dog doll in that you know the student or the residents they are trying how uh, you know the hands uh, they kept uh, one hand above the other and you see that they are keeping the stiff elbow and then uh, movement you know just moving like this instead of uh, moving in a different direction you need to come go back come go back that's the way they need to do it but uh, you are uh, one finger you need to keep on another finger over that and keep your elbow straight and then keep compressing so that uh, you can have a better uh, response in a affected animal how uh, this uh, procedure no? there was a video available it's not playing here and then uh, internal cardiac compressions what you need to do is you no know, there are um, uh, you know uh, animal accident cases uh, when they have a uh, multi organ failure you need to do cpr means do a thoracotomy take your hand take the hand of the animal in your hand and keep gently massaging so that uh, blood from the heart you know it goes to the circulations so that you know um, animal can regain the consciousness advanced side uh, life support uh, you know uh, there are a uh, few steps about initial monitor you need to initiate the monitoring obtain vascular access administer reversal defibrillation therapy and then you know the monitoring i told as soon as the patient come no in the triage room we categorize the animal which is require immediate attention which require later attention which require some more time so that we categorize then we also do a vascular access and there are animal with a lot of uh, drug intoxication we have a certain reversal agent that you can be given and then uh, in spite of all your attempts airway breathing circulation we are not able to see the response we need to go for defibrillations defibrillations there are monophasic defibrillation diabasic defibrillations and then cardiac defibrillation there are several techniques they follow and uh, normally what we have no we use uh, diabasic defibrillations the plate will be like this there are two plate end will be like this and then you know the another plate like this no we keep one plate on the chest uh, one side uh, above the heart region and before that we apply some gel similarly we apply gel on the other side and then uh, we select the uh, jules based on the body weight of the animal normally 4 4 kilo joules per kg body weight we select and then we will enter that then similarly you know once you enter the data we have to connect with the ecg also to be with the patients then uh, you have to say you have to say the people are surrounded by they should be going away you say, you have to say away then this uh, diabetic deep people let us keep it on the heart region both the sides then there is a press button you press it required quantity of kilo joules of current can be sent to that particular patient uh, uh, you know heart regions so it can get, regain the consciousness that's about the uh, use of diabetic defibrillator similarly a single basic fibrillator defibrillator also can be used a similar method only uh, there are occasions in spite of this the animal does so respond you have to do a thoracotomy and then similar uh, you know uh, there are um, uh, cardiac defibrillator and all you know at the tip you know there will be a pedal like small uh, pedal like things are available uh, i told you know four kilo joule per kg body weight you have to select and then cut open the thoracic cavity and then uh, select the kilo joule required for the particular animal and take the probe very near to the heart inside the thoracic cavity press it the required quantity of current you know disseminated in the heart you know it make the animal animal 
hard to beat better the contraction better so animal can regain the consciousness so all these things you know it should have a team and one man has to intubate another man has to do the defibrillations another man should take care of the blood pressures another man has to take care of the free administration there is a team work the 100% saturation oxygen level also we need to administer on time this is the way they do it then i told you ecg attachment is very very important entire carbon dioxide minimum of 15 mm hg should be there and then uh, uh, if it is above that tunnel it has to be addressed proportion to tissue blood flow and the perfusions we need to check sudden increase indicate uh, uh, you know uh, rise of spontaneous circulation return of systemic circulations The vascular assessment, intravenous catheterization, peripheral catheterization, intravenous catheterization, everything I told you. The paraphrenic vein catheterization is easy. Then uh, intravenous catheterization, the smaller dogs and all, you save the fur on the hip region. Then infiltrate ligand again, then attach the needle and uh, check whether the needle is inside the medullary cavity of the femur bone. And then, uh, you know, I told you, you know, this is my favorite site. I save the area, infiltrate ligand again. and then uh, the smaller puppy and i'll take the smaller needle i introduce uh, after infiltrating ligna gain it can go very easily if it is going uh, laterally uh, you when you administer fluid or drug it will come subcutaneously there will be a swelling if it is going posteriorly it may cause damage to the sciatic nerve and uh, if you want to check whether the needle inside the medullary cavity the femur bone i'll keep moving the femur bone if it is uh, moving parallel to the movement of the femur bone that is inside the medullary cavity of the femur if it doesn't move like that that it may be in the subcutaneous or lateral side we can verify this thing take an x ray and then presence of the needle you can uh, identify very easy this about the selection of the femur you can also use the wing of the ilium and then a similar technique you can follow follow similarly lateral canal of the humerus the humerus will be coming like this this also can be used these are all the important site and rarely used in veterinary practice in many places but uh, my suggestion and recommendations when you are not able to access the peripheral vessel actually puppies and kittens you know quite challenging when you raise the peripheral blood vessels even dog cat also when they are hypertension it become challenging you will not be able to perform the procedure uh, very very effectively another important things uh, which i want to tell you is uh, So lateral canal of the humerus. These are all the site also recommended, but uh, I am comfortable with the you know trochanteric pose of the femur needle insertion. And this is also mouth to snout technique, and you know they are checking the consciousness of the animal, and instead of emotionally crying and uh, you know uh, creating a lot of disturbance to animal, you need to be uh, uh, scientific, be scientific. and uh, these breeds especially bulls they are prone to have a lot of problems like uh, uh, they get dilated cardiomyopathy and uh, suddenly they become faint due to cardiac problem and those cases you know uh, uh, you can blow very near to the nostril thereby you get a sufficient oxygen and the animal can regain the consciousness and uh, you can also perform cpr uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitations and you can make the animal to revive so that's the reason normally we do a uh, compression technique you know uh, under to 120 beats per minute uh, you can follow one third half of the chest you can use it allow full recoiling of the process uh, two minute uninterrupted compression we need to do it so suppose you are doing one minute uh, that uh, compression may not be sufficient and you see the intensivist you know the color coding and all how they are uh, you know upright but even then he has to wear the mask and then cap eh? that's also very important for his safety corona time and all if he is standing like this for animal side corona he will pick it up for human side corona he will pick it up see that you know you must be uh, protected that's very important the round chested keel chested flat chested already i told you in one of the slides and this also already i focused this also already this also i will do and this also you know 
there are uh, societies they train the vet and uh, how we need to do the uh, you know, uh, compressions how hand your mind should be trained all those things are uh, there are uh, japan there are us uh, veterinary centers are available those who are interested they can go there and update their knowledge and skill um the the, the, the technical tip about the tbr here uh, hand over hand shoulder over hand lock elbow so these are the tips uh, you, need, you need to follow actually this is the uh, already i this also i played and uh, airway breathing circulations uh, you know there are cpr center for human being how they need to do you know uh, there is a device available in that you know uh, how much compression they are giving first there is a video will play and after seeing the video you need to perform the procedure if you are performing the procedures uh, you know correctly and uh, there will be a grading so that you, you can have the your uh, experience and uh, you know how much you are effectively do a cpr uh, all those things you can analyze this is some of the uh, you know air force airport center in us they keep this and many places they also keep the defibrillators many of the teaching institutions they have a defibrillator animal uh, the human being which are painting you know, they keep even animals also all the institution they have a defibrillator we have a good end defibrillator attached with ecg so i already told you mouth to snout technique close mouth blow in and keep the, you have to keep the neck straight and then uh, so the, when you do a 15 compression one uh, respiration you need to make you need to intubate i told you ambu back technique i told you and with the help of ventilator also you can address that even anesthetic machine also you switch off the anesthetic side and uh, oxygen sub cylinder supply will be there most of the anesthetic machines that oxygen alone we can supply uh, this is the way you know the diabetes defibrillator how they are using the, the team of uh, expert is here and the learners are uh, you know surrounded by this animal actually a doll and you know the animal uh, collapsing stage how they are react and he is uh, grading uh, the his uh, uh, performance and uh, we already selected the homony closure the mesh defibrillator is here he is applying the defibrillator on the side of the animal or applying the gel similarly that side then there is a press button he has to press once you press no you can see the required quantity of kilo joule uh, sent to the patient uh, heart and then you know they make them animal to regain the consciousness that's the way it is and uh, this uh, guidelines are available in the book and you can follow this algorithm uh, so you can perform the cpr technique proper and the post resuscitation care you need to keep the optimization of the respiratory area hemodynamic support you have to give neuroprotective therapy you need to give so, uh, post therapy also there are uh, steps you need to follow that then uh, reassessment campaign on veterinary resuscitations so there are uh, society they are giving the training you can approach them so so that your hand mind will be trained and uh, you must have the recovery guidelines recover guidelines you must have in the hospital or the institute so that you know hardwit pharma presents clinda hand clindamycin syrup and tablets a weapon to fight deadly infections with care clinda hand is available in the following formats clindamycin 250 mg tablets clinda hand 250 tablets clindamycin 600 mg tablets clinda hand 600 tablets Clindamycin oral suspension Clindahad syrup For placing order you can contact our sales team or WhatsApp 9837253817 or visit www.hatwit.com Thank you Everybody can follow the same protocols there are several uh, latest guidelines that are available uh, I will give the website also you can go there google it and so see the guidelines that guideline you follow no 
many number of patients can be saved and uh, you know you give a happy life to the animals happy life to the family and uh, that day you will also be happy and you can see some uh, one of the center in us how busy it is and uh, you know all the trainees and uh, you can see the overhead lamp you can see the working place and the center uh, examination table and then you know it's a movable uh, light source we have a similar thing is similar setup in our hospital and you know the intensivist how is performed the procedure they are not keeping the owner inside that is very important message to some of my colleagues and uh, most of our people know they keep the owner along with you if you keep the along the owner with you then it will become problem you will not be able to perform the procedure on time and then uh, this also the unit uh, how busy it is and uh, see the all the accessory they keeping everything ready you have a vital sign monitor you have a gas analysis machine overhead uh, light source resources there are uh, suction devices and there are gauze and uh, so many warmers and then uh, reference books the critical care unit and uh, so all those things you know it should be readily available and a uh, ready working team that's very important our team also should be available on time see the again the examiner and uh, how straight she is keeping and uh, the she is getting direction from them. and every way the technical discussions whatever they do no uh, they every day they discuss during lunch time or free time uh, whatever they do no they interact with each other uh, they get the input from uh, various people sometimes from the senior man sometimes from the a colleague they will also give their input to uh, each and every case so there are a lot, lot of uh, uh, advancement uh, still uh, the, you know survival to discharge still low and then um, you know there, there are till till date in human medicine 50% uh, mortality rate there in uh, icu uh, sometimes the conversation in the among the or people it should be honest open conversations uh, that should be there uh, so that will help our people there are statement i feel like things are so organized we have a very much smooth cpr attempt i cannot remember how we used to do this before the new protocol it feels so calm going through the compression cycle we still have our chaotic session but i like how everyone knows what should be happening the deep breathing helps a lot with the new protocol we are doing the best to job possible our patient get the best chance so kindly my recommendation kindly follow the new protocol so that you can save uh, many patients then uh, cpr package basic advanced life support for ventilations you can get to the www.recoverinitiative.org you have all the details uh, how are the certifications work what are the courses they are giving what are the guidelines that are available what research is going on what are the uh, certification resources everything available in this site better go ahead and uh, get the details then there are uh, you know uh, course available for uh, recovery uh, people and also available for uh, pet rescuer certified pet rescuer course also available so you can uh, those who are interested you can go there so when you have a 24 hour emergency critical care unit no, you can uh, this technique will be of uh, more important already i told you you need to be keep calm and resuscitate um, and then ta keep, keep moving around the emergency room and uh, you know uh, you can communicate uh, you know uh, politely instead of uh, too much sound you know already in a critical care unit there's a lot of noise like uh, from the patient side a lot of noise from the pet parent side a lot of noise from the all vital sign uh, monitor alarm ventilator alarm the sounds also disturbing to the animal and then uh, you know uh, less sound it make the animal comfortable so 
that's the way you know it will be a more useful and then uh, and then we may get a lot of cases uh, foreign body and then uh, pericardial effusions and uh, you need to roll uh, you know multiple role in taking care of the patients and uh, and then uh, patients which are coming from far away place, uh, you, you know, you need to tell them uh, if the animal met with an accident or trauma, you need to immobilize them in a safe manner and then bring it to the hospital that you are to our base. And then when they presented you, where do you start? HT versus physical examination. How sick is the patient? Can you divide and conquer? So all those things should be you how to decide. There are uh, several books that are available, principle and practice of case based on clinical reasoning and education that you can go through and then it will give you much more information. And initial evaluation, you know, you need to do it, a rapid assessment is very, very important. For slowly examining the one patient, critically ill patient, then the patient will die. So prioritize the life-threatening abnormalities first. So epistaxis plan to control the uh, bleeding. And similarly, poisoning case, uh, quickly take the observation, give an antidote. And the animal which are having GDV, immediately go for gastrocentesis. Animal which are having a bladder distension, urethral obstructions, relieve the urethral obstruction. First, relieve the pressure. Animal with the ascites, lot of fluid accumulation, relieve the fluid from the stomach. Then that will avoid the compression on the heart, lung, that will give a comfort. Then identify the cause. Animals which are having a lot of fluid accumulation in the pleura, do a thoracosynthesis and relieve the fluid. Animals which are having a lot of fluid accumulation in the pericardium, do a pericardial synthesis and relieve it. So all this synthesis procedure, it's a life-saving procedure, you have to do it on time. Uh, these are the pictures we have got it, you know, does this animal need a sepia? So this animal is quiet and, you know, just relaxing, it doesn't need. Animals which are uh, requiring CPR, you know the importance of them, you need to understand. Pulse, heart rate, measurement is ideal. Pulse is the most important, however, so check it first. Auscultation can be difficult, body condition, respiratory sounds, and then all those things are very, very important. Then the animal with uh, having a muffled heart sound, uh, you will get it in case of uh, pericardial effusions. And then uh, in case of atrial fibrillations, ventricular tachycardia, there are valvular disease you will get. And there is a muffled heart sound. And uh, in between the pericardium and myocardium, you can see the presence of fluid. You have to approach the right side to release the fluid with the echocardiography guidance. And this is a GDV. You can see the bubble double appearance. And normally what I do, no, just uh, introduce the needle, relieve the gas. Then I will correct the problems. Lymph node examinations, rectal examinations, presence of ecchymosis or fatigue. So you, all these things, you know, when they walk them, no, that time itself you have to watch. Imaging is very, very important in a critical care setup. What you have to do is, uh, if there is a technique called T-FAST and uh, A-FAST, T-FAST thoracic assessment for a tra a trauma in thoracic cavity. AFAS focused assessment sonography for trauma in abdominal region. So, TFAS focused assessment sonography for trauma in thoracic region. Similarly, uh, AFAS abdominal region. So, the examiner now with the bedside ultrasonography playing an important role. What he does now, he just uh, examining the patients where the patient is present. In the case of pleural effusion, you can see the anechoic structure in the thoracic cavity. The pleura will be hyperechoic. Immediately, you can diagnose and relieve the pain. Pulmonary congestion and edema, you will have a lot of racket sign. In case of a, a tumor, the thoracic cavity, you will have a step sign. So, if you see that, accordingly, you can act the, uh, act the case. Another important animal which are having a pericardial efficient, in between the myocardium and the myocardium and pericardium, you can see the anatomic pain. Through ultrasound guidance, introduce the needle on the right side and remove the pain. Don't try with the left side. The left side, every possible image with the coronary. Similarly, you know, uh, you can do a 
which side recognize identify the metal wall disease pericardial effusions and uh, pleural effusions similarly you can do a uh, abdominal ultrasonography i told you know t uh, a fast there are four anatomical sites wherein uh, you will have a fluid accumulation as well as the animal meat with an accent one is hepatic diaphragm in between the liver and diaphragm another area is the spleen orinal between the spleen and the kidney another third area cystocolic between the bladder and the colon fourth area is again uh, you know between the hepatic vein uh, right side kidney and the liver this area there are dead space as well as the animal met with an accident you can see the accumulation of fluid when there is any damage inside and then severity also it varies the more amount of accumulations uh, you know you can see uh, fluid in all the blood or fluid in all the places less amount of accumulations it will be in one or two places the mild to moderate severe you can grade according to the uh, place amount of fluid that are accumulated so uh, dear friends and uh, you know uh, tpr uh, is a team work and uh, your hand uh, should be trained your eyes should be trained and then uh, color coding of the patients is also very important as much as they present to you you need to segregate which is need immediate attention which is they need uh, later attention uh, all those things you need to prioritize the critical care specialist you need to keep around you should be calm and the small small thing it is a life saver hypothermia vomit hypothermia reduce the temperature hypoglycemia give the glucose fluid accumulation thorax relieve it fluid accumulation abdomen relieve it small small procedure it is life saving procedure anemia give a blood and uh, anemia due to fluid loss give a ringus tract and uh, these are all the small small the venous access is very important intubation is very important and then uh, so compression of the chest animal with affected with the cardio pulmonary problems you need to do it on time identify the cause and treat the uh, cause at the earliest possible before that all these small small steps are life saving in a small animal emergency critical care setting. with this i conclude my talk for placing order contact our sales team whatsapp at 9837253817 or visit www.hatbit.com thank you